Well, you might not know it, but this week is Dog Bite Prevention Week. And to help raise awareness about why dogs bite people and to give you and your family some tips on reading a dog's body language, we're joined by Dr. Ian Kupke from the Sable Chase Animal Clinic in Thank Kendall. You very much. Thanks for coming in this morning. Wonderful to be here. Ian, uh, just because a dog bites you doesn't mean it's a bad dog, right? No, dogs bite as a form of communication. What makes it dangerous is that we're a lot more fragile than dogs are. A dog can bite another dog. It's no big deal most of the time. Our skin uh, immediately Just breaks. Just can't handle it. Can't handle it. But generally, if a dog is going to bite you, they give a lot of warning signs, right? They give a lot of warning signs, but they're, they're, they're subtle. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, a, a lot of these warning signs may happen very, very quickly. But We're showing uh, right now what is a you know, obviously a graphic of a dog that's showing some, just name a few of these warning signs, the ears down. So look at, look at the dog's posture. First mm -hmm. of all, you see that the dog's very tense, and that's the, that's the easiest thing for a child to pick up, is that they're tense, they're rigid, they're, they're, they're stiff as a statue. Basically, if they're loose and wiggly, it's okay. If they're stiff as a statue, stay away. That's the little rhyme we came up with. Um, you've got a dog that's uh, focused, uh, rigid, you see those stiff, uh, stiff posture. The, the stare, uh, the sometimes stare. that they'll uh, give. The ears are not necessarily back; they're to the side. You notice that the brows flat. You notice the dogs kind of hunkered down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Most of all, you notice the dogs intense and focused, and that's the real giveaway. When you've got a dog that's that intense, you don't want a child going near it because the dog is otherwise occupied and doesn't want to doesn't want to play. Right. He's got other things on his mind. Now, you know, uh, children are very affectionate towards animals and uh, that can be dangerous, right? I mean, they want to hug a dog, but not all dogs enjoy being hugged, especially I mean if it's your animal, right. that's one thing. If it's someone else's, that's entirely different, correct? And that's actually exactly the point we we're wanting to make. The the thing with children is that they're very open, they're very demonstrative. They want to mm -hmm. show affection to everybody. Uh, dogs are not wired like that. We're primates. We're wired to kiss and hug. For a dog, a hug is an enclosure, mm -hmm. and a kiss is a direct threat that will be answered by a bite. So it's totally misinterpreted by the dog. Completely. Okay. Completely. Here's a, here's a child that's hugging a dog from behind. Is and that they, better or worse? It's, it's just bad. Okay. Uh, you can see, again, by the posture of this dog, the dog is a good dog. He doesn't want to bite the child, but you can see the dog's hating this. The dog looks stressed. He looks stressed. He looks uh, unhappy. Now, this is something, uh, actually, a, a classic situation. The parents are thinking this is cute. They right. think that the, the child is interacting with the dog. But look at the dog. Whale eyes. Uh, that means whites of the eyes showing. You notice that the dog is completely trying to avoid this behavior. He's, he's trying to act as if this isn't even happening. Right. He wants to get away, but he can't get away. And, and in those cases, the dogs did not bite the child. No. And that's just no. telling you that the dog is a really good really dog. Really good dog. Putting up with a lot, right? Exactly. But it's all about thresholds of tolerance. And of course, things can lower that threshold if, you're, if your dog is sick, if your dog has got arthritis, mm -hmm. if your dog is stressed in any way. Um, if a dog is in heat. Uh, How about signs of fear? They're, sometimes they can be very subtle. This dog, obviously, from its eyes, you can tell it's scared, right? And, and that's a magic picture, but that's, that's an extreme case. Right. Clearly, this dog is petrified and shouldn't be approached. You realize that a dog communicates by a nip. Uh, it, it's, it's not malice, it's not malevolent, it's just a, a nip and then it's over. Dog to dog, this is something that dogs tolerate. A nip to a person can be a hospital event. Now, this dog does, to me, just, uh, you know, looking at it, I wouldn't think this is a threatening position for a dog. You're saying it is? Yeah, the dog is still intense, mm -hmm. tails up, right. rigid, and focused. Um, think about it with ourselves. You know, if you're in the middle of a very complex project and someone ear interrupts you, you get that flash of irritation that socialized people move on from. A dog snaps. Here's dogs socializing. Their tails mm -hmm. are up, their ears are up, but they're saying to each other, hey, yeah. I got to get to know you first. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Well, listen, Ian, fascinating stuff. Fantastic. I, I think it really is important for people to understand their animals, and that way we can be better pet owners as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to post this whole segment on our Facebook page as well as on our web page at local10.com. You've got a lot more information there. We're going to try and get that out to our viewers. We, we do have a coloring book, which is absolutely wonderful. It shows a shows child how to approach a dog and what to avoid. Mm -hmm. uh, you can download that on our website, okay. sablechaseanimalclinic.com. Thanks, Ian.